And then the Aesop fables, face up the fables of Aesop. This cat right here, the black man of the Nile, uh, Dr. Yosef Ben Yakanan. Mm. That's one of the best books in the world you'll ever find. <laughs> gotta dive into that, man. <laughs> yeah, man. Talent's overrated. Yeah, keep the book. So Malcolm X speaks. Man. Yeah, yeah man. Got, um, and then all the 50s 50. law. Oh man, was, 50 cent. Mm. Yeah, 50. And uh uh Robert Green. But this is all my dad's collection of books, just on Uncle Malcolm. Man whole collection of books man so Let's, yeah man yeah we can dive um, yeah. in man um so it, um yeah. yeah introduce yourself to the people and uh yeah we're gonna okay. hook up man <laughs> yeah all right what's up what's up everybody what's up world i'm uh iso jonesy aka steve jones uh great nephew of malcolm x man. and just a great great grandson of Luis little and Earl little yeah, yeah. Man, so uh, how is it being from that, um, you know, the lineage, man? How is that, that family tree and, um, you know, the, the stories and everything yeah. you came across and the knowledge you gained? Man, the family tree is it's amazing, man. It's, uh, it's strong genes, I would say. Very strong genes. And uh, the stories I've come across is so many stories, Um that just make you laugh and just show the smiling side of everyone in the family or yeah. the serious sides. Um, it's, of course, too many stories to even name. I got a glare right here. Yeah. From, from Which is top three? <laughs> the top three stories. Uh, uh, man, top three. Probably one about uh, Uncle Malcolm, like, uh, he, he, when they were kids, like he made a bowl of uh, chili mm -hmm. and he, he made it so hot that nobody in the house was trying to eat it but him. <laughs> That's how like, I make my tea, man. <laughs> <laughs> we make my tea hot. <laughs> this is uh, what, like cayenne pepper? Uh, not cayenne pepper. I just have it up too high, bro. <laughs> just have oh, it yeah. up high, man. It be burning. Yeah. Me. <laughs> Yeah, I feel it. I feel it. Tea is really good for you in the morning, man. Hot tea. I need to get some of that. Uh, and then another story is like, this one my grandma told me. My grandma is uh, the youngest daughter, the youngest girl of a family. Her name's Yvonne Woodward Jones. Yvonne is the baby. He called her Vani in the book, uh, the autobiography of Malcolm X. Yeah. Um, and she told me a story about, I can't remember which brother it was, but they were, sorry, some doge got away from me on eBay. <laughs> I ain't tripping about that. All right. Uh, yeah, she had, she had like told me the story where they were playing in the snow and one of her brothers grabbed a snowball and threw it and it hit one of the brothers in the head and he just started bleeding like, Bleeding, bleeding, and it was. It happened to be a rock inside of there. It, it that <laughs> it's not funny, but it's just like, dang. Oh man, <laughs> that's that's yeah. She always told me that story. Um, and there's so many of them. Another one that I love. Um, it's like it's some sad stories, but then it's like, wow, it's like powerful. Like this one's in the book. Okay. Uh, my great granddad would would have his kids go out during snow. They did a lot of work during the snow time and a lot of playing. But uh, he would have them go like wipe off the uh, the garden. He had they had a garden out and they had windows set outside, and they put the seeds underneath these windows, and then they would have to go wipe all the snow off of the uh, window the, off of the glass, mm -hmm. so that the sun can shine down into and then create. A plant and so by the time spring came around they had them they already had a plant like they had crops <laughs> just from that knowledge man yeah from that, that knowledge, knowledge uh, like growing on you know that that's what we need to get back into man oh um, yeah so what so what's some stories about you know malcolm little before you know malcolm x you know um okay. like the transition stories that you heard about and that that was passed down um, 
Like I know it's fast and was serious. I can I could yeah. fast for six days, you know, water, water fast, but man, I heard his fasting was a uh, strict, man. Very strict, very strict, uh dietary. Like I think they said that he didn't really have any food in his um, not food, but any like uh sweets or anything in his stomach when they ended up doing the auto tops. They say he was the one of the most healthy specimens in the world. Man. Just because he didn't eat sugary stuff. He didn't, man, I wish I had his discipline. <laughs> but eating sugary stuff, eating uh, you know, just unhealthy things. Um, but I would say some of the transition stories was like, um, Uncle Reginald uh, was really uh, captivating and really um, influential. Should be the word. He was really the 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 one who got Uncle Malcolm to transition to the Nation of Islam. You okay. see, it was really like his brothers and sisters pushing him rather than what the movie tries to tell us. Okay, yeah. So that's one of the things that's true is that Reginald Little, his little brother, it talks about in the autobiography as well. But uh, yeah, kind of his re his his little brother is the one who kind of got him out of the uh, the streets, and yeah. And another thing is that. Um, Uncle Malcolm, he, he kind of was like, he, he was militant as a kid. Like his, his dad would take him to, um, to visit these, these, these militant black figures. So he would go with him to go to these prominent meetings of Marcus Garvey, the UNIA meetings. Malcolm would be the only one to go. So that's what started it one and also his mom was a bit rough on him because he's my complexion Uncle Malcolm. uh we're a lighter complexion and so they frowned on us I don't know what it is or why it is that way but uh his mom was very uh hard on him and his dad was very easy on him so that was one of the things that he would be like man what I'm a out I'm a backlash I'm gonna I'm fight against it yeah. I'm gonna, you know, just I'm gonna go and steal some stuff from the store because I don't have anything at home. I'm starving, and my mom is is she's she's struggling, but at the same time, she's working hard. Yeah. And he didn't get it. He didn't get it that it was a lot of stress on her. And I wish he would have got it. But I think he now you can read it in the autobiography is that he wish he wasn't so hard on her. But at the same time, my great grandma, man, she is amazing. She was amazing. Yeah. amazing at what she did as far as bringing up all those children by herself after her husband was killed murdered yeah, exactly. brutally cut yeah. in half still live for the whole entire day cut in half man so um and then they got over on her you know they pulled a fast one on her but so all that is what really fueled the fire for malcolm he actually wanted to know who killed his dad he was digging yeah uh, and Elijah Muhammad um, was telling him, like, you know, let's forget about it, you know. And he's like, look, I think I, I think I got, I think I know, who did it, you know. And Elijah, it was very, this is the same uh, way, man. <laughs> rare information, yeah. but it was very, uh, it was very tough because Malcolm was trying to find out who these adversaries were early in his lifetime when he was still in prison. Um, and he was trying to find out, he had a lawyer trying to find out who killed his dad. And Elijah Muhammad at first was for it. And then I think he started to tell him like, just forgive and forget, you know, cause that's one of the nation's uh, policies, forgive and forget and know that ja, that Allah, ja, know that Allah will take care yeah. of, of you. Um, but uh, Malcolm's upbringing, it really, bro, it really stemmed off of Mary Turner. A lot of people don't know this, okay. but Mary Turner is her name. You'll have to look her up, gosh. But uh, M-A-R-Y-T-U-R-N-E-R. -E Mary Turner had a husband who was killed back in like the 1919 or, or 1918. This is before Malcolm was born. But mm -hmm. um, when, when, when her husband was killed due to a, 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 not a slave revolt, but more or less like yeah, he May, got into uh, an argument with a May white 19th. 
May 19th, the day of his yeah. birthday. Yeah. She was killed, right? Man. They took her body. She has she was pregnant. They smashed the baby. They cut open her stomach yeah. and then smashed the baby. Sad. But this yeah. violent act spoke to Malcolm. And it's what really catapulted him to become a militant figure other than, of course, oppression, the downpressor, man. People always against him. The Ku Klux Klan was against our family since the beginning, man. So all these things stem, but the Mary Turner incident, it's a hidden thing that I wanted to introduce to your show because not many people know that Mary Turner's life really drove him to being... A, a, an aggressive leader for black black freedom yeah. you know because what what did they kill her for and, and and no one even talks about it no one talks about it we talk about malcolm but we don't talk about exactly. how what made him a fire brand and that is one thing that really did of course his dad being murdered is another thing or, yeah. or his mom being put in a mental institution but yeah. i would say the three things that's hidden is that one, his family got him into the nation. His family yeah. got him into the nation, not Elijah Muhammad, not this person they made up. They made up a character in the movie. Mm. But nothing that, wrong that with book, that. You know, Alex Haley, man, you know, his, his, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? His, um, yeah, he's not uh, legit, you know what I'm saying? The story, some some of the storyline was kind of like, yeah. What, so, the autobiography or the... like. I, th- I think some parts on the movie, like some, you know, I mean, oh, based on roots. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Some, you know, some parts you felt, did you feel like some parts was like, if he like wasn't all the way, you know, official or? Oh, yeah. There was a lot of backlash and my grandma was alive at that time. So she had to get with Spike, like they met and she had to get with him like, this isn't right and this isn't right. But they're doing the same thing today, uh, yeah. you know. People make up their own stories every day about Malcolm. There's Instagram accounts with people saying they Malcolm X and got nothing but pictures of Uncle Malcolm. <laughs> and then I go and say, hey, hey, what's up, brother? And they're like, no, I'm a sister. <laughs> so it's like, I mean, well, more power to you. You know, you, you, you're passing on our family's legacy. It's just tough because people making so much money off of them. It's like, yeah. I bought this shirt, but did any of the money go to Bob Molly's family? Exactly. That's the same thing that's happened with Uncle Malcolm's legacy. But like similar could be happening with, you know, MF Doom, you know, as well, you know, just to throw a name out there. You know what I'm saying? You know, they hopefully all MF, yeah, hopefully MF Doom's legacy is closed up. I believe it is because he's been around a long time in his estate. He probably signed something saying, yo, y'all got to, y'all got to pay for my likeness. That's yeah. what Martin, that's what Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Yeah. And, um, it was, uh, you know, I heard like they they've been watching this family for years, like tapping their phones for a while, like the whole family. Not e- not even start with him, but like, yeah. You you talking about Martin or Malcolm? Yeah, Martin. Yeah. I wanted to also bring that up, kind of uh, Uncle Malcolm. They talk about how him being watched when he got into prison. I think it was, and I, I'll I'll lament a little bit on uh on uh Alex Haley's book as well, but um. Yeah, the, the the thing about that is they've been watching Malcolm. They were watching him since he was 12, 13. Mm. He was put into a uh, a home, a group home, right? Yeah. But that but that was because of a a a, a behavioral problem, sadly. You know, they attribute that word a behavioral problem after they killed off the whole family or or, or, or separate the whole family, and then it's a behavioral problem. Come on. Okay. But uh, so he went into a group home, a detention center, right? In Mason, Mason, I think it is, in Mason, Michigan, and not far from Lansing. So he still got to see my my grandmother. He still got to see his brothers sometimes, but you could tell things were changing, yo. And uh, they started to keep a record on him once he went into a detention center because you have to understand my great grandfather is pivotal um, for bringing. Marcus Garvey to Michigan. Um, my great grandmother actually was the secretary of the univer- uh, the Un- Universal Negro Improvement Association. Man. She was the secretary. That's deep, man. That's deep. Yeah. 
Yeah, so she was the secretary for the Lansing chapter. And um, they try to say, like, you know, my great-grandfather was the pivotal one, but it was really her. Mm. She was the one that could read and could write, you know, and could, you know, but so the really, really, really deep part about it is that kind of like uh, my great-grandfather was murdered, not because of him being Black and being in Lansing at the wrong time. It was because he wrote a letter to the, to the president. You can look this up right now. Earl Little writes a letter to, I don't want to say it, the, the president's name wrong. Woodrow Wilson, as I'm, I'm a guess. I'm a guess. Uh, I don't want to get it wrong, though. But uh, he wrote a letter to the president and said that he wanted Marcus Garvey out of prison or out of jail. And that letter sparked some type of conflict I feel and they said that we want to take him out well they've been watching Malcolm since then you see since that time frame so so with Uncle Malcolm's uh legacy now being wide open it kind of shows that they were just trying to cut the fire back before it got man he talks about this himself but yeah. Before the fire got too crazy, he won, they they put out the flame. They they started a whole nother fire. They mm-hmm. started a whole nother fire. And that's how they put out other fires. But anyway, uh, so he wrote, I don't know if you did you look it up or anything, but he wrote a letter. I'm looking it up. And, and that letter, it, it really did popularize my great grandfather as a as a uh, as a potential hazard to these American. Uh, to the American democracy at the time, because it was saying, you know, he he didn't do anything wrong, let him out, and it was a black man talking to the president, like mailed, you know, what 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 black people yeah. were mailing the letters to the president in the twenties. Dave uh, Dave Chappelle's a great, I think, great grandfather. You know what I'm saying? He pulled up to the <laughs> to talk oh, to straight him. up. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> he was talking about it in um his uh. That, uh, I think it was an eight eight minute special you put out. Yeah, yeah, I about love, uh, I love Dave Chappelle, man. Oh yeah, legend, man, legend, man, definitely. Yeah, mm-hmm. like yeah, they don't talk about these stories, man. You know, no, they yeah. don't. Yeah, man. What was and then um, Wikipedia just twisted all up for you? Oh yeah, but um, yeah, but yeah, yeah that, that, that. that. <laughs> yeah. What was everything. your question? Oh yeah, um, so I guess we could dive into um your viewpoints on um you know. You know the one night in Miami. Um, okay. How did you overall feel about you know uh, Malcolm's yeah. portray? I had to watch it twice. Uh, I think being a family member is kind of tough for me to see him at a, a, a volatile state. I use that word right now because it's starting to become fresh in my vocab. Uh, but I didn't like that anger, the anger issues that they gave him. Yeah. And and. I feel like his composure is way more meek is the word I would use. Yeah. He's way more meek and he's not that, especially him being that older, you know, cause this was like months before he passed on. So I didn't, but he is, he was also going through a lot at that time, but he wasn't doing any, like taking any pain pills or anything like that for him to be that, uh, uh, paranoid but then again if somebody's after you you exactly. would know and then who would know you so said he uh, watched it twice yeah he's been watched by like since 12 that kind of makes sense since like 12. it's always been someone watching that's crazy yeah yeah big brother been watching you know big brother yeah <laughs> that's crazy you can go to, you can go i didn't finish that but you can go in the fbi files and you can see when they started finding uh, uh little traces of uncle malcolm and the literally the first one of the first things was when he went into that detention home and then they started keeping a the record. Then he got in trouble when he was in Boston as a kid and they, they got records, man, FBI. So, yeah. and nothing, nothing, I think it, what it is is J. Edgar Hoover was mm-hmm. really looking for the Messiah and looking yeah. for the black Messiah and trying to cut him down. And it's sad because we got those J. Edgar Hoovers today, you know, yeah. um, you know, I just think like it's tough, but but for Malcolm, it was like they was at him. They were gunning for him just because his dad did something against uh, the American democracy. But then when he woke up and uplifted his mind, 
they said, oh, shoot, we got to get this one out. So it's, you see what it is. It's like, yeah, so, it's yeah a- it went all the way down to his grandson, man. They took yeah. him out in, in Mexico. Yeah, man. Yeah, they, it's ridiculous. It's a cycle, man. What did it you is. feel about Sam Cooke go. in uh, his conversation? Because I feel like that's damn near the conversation we was trying to have with Lupe. <laughs> For <laughs> real, like, man. I, I'm yeah. glad you brought that up, man. Hey, yeah. much love to Lupe. Much and love. And at the same time, because I see you be on there, you be on there like, bro, Lupe, yes. And it's like, I was the same way. But then, like, looking back at it, it's like, yo, thanks, Lupe, for giving me that time. But at the same time, understand where we're coming from, man. This book talks about it all, man. Black man of the Nile. If we were here first and yeah. you're trying to take all our history and say it was yours, why wouldn't we argue the fact? Or, or why wouldn't we ask for our reparation? Because and, uh, we built this, you know. Always but, uh, uh, Sam Cook, oh, yeah. phenomenal, man. Sam Cook, man. Phenomenal. The fact that he mentioned that, uh, you know, Rolling Stones, you know, pretty much took, you know, uh, I forget his name. Yeah. <laughs> he found Rolling Stones, right? Is that how he framed it? Said um Rolling Stones took the song that uh, what's his name? Uh he mentioned Yeah, uh, it's uh Bobby. Bobby. Bobby, Bobby Womack. Womack. Bobby Womack, man. He like his his like like after Sam passed, like he tried to talk to his wife. Like, yo, <laughs> he didn't he try, he did on. it. He got hands and, and he, feet he, put he, on him. <laughs> I, man, my my brother, my little brother, uh uh much love to him. He always be bringing that story up, man. He'd yeah. be like, man, Sam Cooke, man, the minute he died, his, his boy, Bobby Womack, took his suit, mm. wore his suit to his funeral, and then took his woman. It was like, damn. But I guess, man, I got to watch that Netflix story about the two killings of Sam Cooke. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, I dived into it, man. That It was hard to watch, man. You know, how they, you know, how they did them. You know, that, uh, that story, that song that I was born by a river in a little tent, mm-hmm. you know, just like the river I've been running ever since. It kind of remind me of the Nile River, you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Hey, Amen. In the Nile Valley. Full circle, man. Uh, it really is. It's a book I got uh, called, like, Prehistoric Pyramids in America. So this is, yeah. it's always been, you know, father and mother, you know, that America always been father and I feel like Africa always been mother. You know, to, uh, to our people. That's what I feel at this point. It's too much Real. history in that book. <laughs> it's like, it's, it's a I'm good I'm going to have to check that. It's, it's pretty much out. maps. It's maps and information, yeah. pretty much. It's, it's pretty good. Good book. That book, I bet you it relates to this book right here. I keep bringing this book back up. But, uh, yeah. man, it, was, it talks about Manito. Manito and how he re- created the first calendar. Mm. Calendar, bro. Solus, the Sothis calendar you see he was talking i was uh, talking about calendars uh last week man we broke down you know our true calendar man <laughs> you know I, yeah what's that the ethiopian calendar uh the solar the solar calendar so pretty much yeah, yeah. 10 yeah. uh 10 months pretty much it's a it's a it's a deep these brothers mathematically broke it down it's kind of it's, it's definitely yeah. it's definitely interesting. Well, you know the first the first mathematicians came from africa man akibulan oh. let's 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 talk about that real quick so in this book, he talk about the name of Africa it is a French name, a French word, France. How can France name Africa? You can fit France inside of Africa like a thousand times. Yeah. You can fit United States inside of Africa. Yeah. You know what I mean? So Africa is called Akibulan, um, A-L-K-E-B-U-L-A-N. And that's our history, man. It, it dates back before Africa was named Afrique, you see, yep. by the French. And uh, uh, before the first European colonizers came to, to Akibulan, there were different tribes, or you could call them tribes, but we call them uh, high cultures, high culture civilizations. And they are all the Great Lakes region is what it's called, man. When we, we think of Great Lakes, we think Michigan. Nah, bruh. Lakes in Africa are bigger than that. You know what I mean? And then they got one of them's named after Victoria now. You see how they changed stuff, stuff up? Oh, yeah. But uh, and, um, salute to Jane Elliott. Like, she exposed how the map yeah. manipulates, you know, the true, you know, size of Africa and, yeah, America. Yeah. Salute to Jane Elliott. Yeah, shout out to her. Uh, and Antioch for oh, always yeah. bringing her into the figure in the Definitely. foreground. 
But um, that that whole topic, bro, I would like to talk uh, about that one day. We could both we could sit down okay. and do another Zoom. Um, because okay. that that that's a whole book, man. Um, Akub Akibulan is so lost that uh, King Leopold, I wouldn't even want to call him king, mm-hmm. it would be looked at as like eight times worse than Hitler if we oh, yeah. really knew the atrocities he committed and how he and other whack-ass people from all these small-ass countries took over South Africa and, oh, yeah. and, and like mur- murder by the millions, man, that it would make the Holocaust look like it was, gen- it was just a January 6th insurrection, <laughs> like six people died type thing, you know? It will make the Holocaust look that small, um, but I don't think it's, it's. I don't think it's like. I don't think we're supposed to bring it up and, and make it seem like it's a bad thing. Instead, we should bring it up and make it seem like this is our heritage, and y'all should be paying us because of this. you see, you see, kind of, you see, France gave back. Uh, they're giving back statues, African statues, and African artifacts, and African things that've been in this museum you know the you know the sphinx the nose man (laughs) artifacts artifacts man (laughs) you know the nose of the sphinx was shot off by napoleon's right right rifles his people exactly right oh actually i take that back they were using cannons they were it was practice it was cannon practice oh yeah they had just got these new cannons and they went to africa and just started shooting them off yeah uh and uh sorry i got a call real quick uh and uh Shot off the nose of the Sphinx. Well, lo and behold, now that nose is in a British museum, never to be returned. But if it were to be returned, you would see the nose look like your nose. Exactly. You know what I mean? And that's what they didn't like. But uh, to just to go back in the full circle at all, Sam Cook, he was telling Malcolm, like, look, you ain't gotta get it your way. It's other ways to get it, to get the attention out to the people. But Malcolm's like, look, brother, you are a weapon. Exactly, yeah. <laughs> You're a weapon, man. A weapon, and then Jim Brown man. is like, we are not weapons, man. Malcolm, we are not weapons. Exactly. And he's like, but you are, you know. And it's that yeah. part let me, after watching that twice, man, it let me see the seriousness of, of what, what he, Uncle Malcolm meant by, yes, you are a weapon. And you see what Sam Cooke did? He used his voice as a weapon. And he, yeah. that night, that that next day or something like that, he was like, you know what? I'm going to do something a little different. And sang that song, I bet you a bunch of people is crying. If not, I know a bunch of Africans were crying because Powerful, that's man. what we are, man. We Africans, man. Whether they like it or not, whether yeah. we like it or not, they try to use the word black so yeah. much to it upsets me now. That's why I uh, break it down, man. Building, um, building uh, leadership, you know, and communication, you know, uh, knowledge, you know, black. Ooh. B-L-K. Ooh. Yeah, yeah, man. I try Man, to- I'm going to have to get some more information from you and see where you just, where you, what stemmed you to become more, not militant, but just open-minded and, and conscious yeah. of, of, of yeah. your... Uh, Baba Dick Gregory, man. I don't know if uh, you got stories with him and his Ooh. interaction. His interaction. You met I'll- my mans? Yeah. Yeah, yeah I, met, I met him in 2017 and, uh, the weird thing is, like a couple weeks later, he passed away. It was kind of, kind of like he passed the torch without knowing. Like it was kind of. Wow. Strange. Yeah. You met anyone like that since? Uh, besides that, he was the only brother that I, uh, you know, OGs and you know that I met. Man. Did he cuss you out at all? Oh no, in a nice cool. way. Nah, he was cool, but like, so I watched him. Uh, so I pretty much. Uh, I went to see like his lecture and he was, you know, he was angry, but information, you know, he, you know, yeah. he's doing a hug. Huh. Huh. <laughs> you know, huh. 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 You, <laughs> you ever been there? Huh. I mean, I love this man. I yeah, love this man. man. Uh, uh, he be snapping Dick, at interviewers, man. I love it. <laughs> man, Dick Gregory, uh, he said something about milk that got me off milk, something crazy. I still eat candy with milk, chocolate in it. That's the bad part, like, that I'm trying to get back out of that's why i was saying like the discipline of uncle malcolm is insane as he uses the word that way insane is the way he likes to say it i love that uh i'll tell you another story about like how my dad told me about uncle malcolm, uh what what he thought but um but yeah it's insane the amount of power that that milk gives these people 
You see, because you drinking a, a milk from a species that's like 20 times bigger than you. Yeah. So what's that gonna do to your body? You know? So this milk, I mean, more power to them, but I just know it's like, I can't remember the name of it. It's like Kaisin or something like that. Anyway, there's something in it, the milk that is so bad for us, but it's, oh, yeah. we, we use that shit to, to a power. Now you got milk and everything. Oh, yeah. Dairy, dairy ain't good for the uh, appendix. It ain't good for the, nah. and it messes the tonsils, man. The tonsils is like the first, you know, pretty much the shack, the Matumbo, you know, to the, uh, to your um your your uh, your defense of your um, immune system, people your don't understand tonsils? that. Yeah, your tonsils are important. If you get your tonsils out, it's like oh, <laughs> it's like that's like your first response. Like, hey, <laughs> it's like, <laughs> but yeah, it's just a lot of when you break down the body, man. It's kind of crazy, man. Even like the toes, I put really? up a post yesterday, man. You know, the lungs, it's all the brain is a, it's a connection in our feet, man. It's, really it's all dope. so our whole body is mathematical, and it's crazy, right? Man. <laughs> So I did, dang, I did want to say that, man. I'm bouncing around right now, but I swear it all uh, makes we cooking, sense. We cooking, man. <laughs> so so this this book, it talks about Manito. I'm actually on it right now. Um, It talks about pi and the, the, the mathematic equations and where they came from. They came from these African civilizations, these, these high culture civilizations from the Nile Valley. Mm -hmm. um, and the high priest Manito in the Nile year. The Nile years. You ever hear people talk about the Nile years? Not too much, exactly. <laughs> See what I'm saying? So, so you know we predate Adam. If we talking about Nile years, Adam wasn't even thought of, uh, or, or or even a, a Moshe, they call him, Moses. Um, yeah. So they talk about like how the Ark, the covenant of the Ark used to be, originally it was called the Great Stone, the Great Stone or something like that, the Stone Chest. <laughs> It was called and this stone chest is mathematically like perfect dog and that's where they got all the information mm -hmm. from from mathematics like this like can you see that yeah so like one plus four plus eight equal 15 right and then 15 plus 60 plus 120 equals 195 13 times 15 is 195 they doing all that with only the numbers one through eight they only had the numbers that from one to eight, it said. It says the main reason for much of the complexities in the above method of calculation was the fact that the Nile Valley and Great Lakes Africans had not yet developed a figure behind, beyond the number eight at this early period in their history. Bro, if that don't tell people that the first people to create oh, the man. number system were African, not black. Exactly. There's a difference. Exactly. Black black can be anything, you know what I mean? Black is a color, man. <laughs> black is a color, man. Yeah, man, this is black, yeah. <laughs> right, right, this, this is black, you know what I mean? Yeah, exactly. But uh, the person in there is African, Exactly. you see? And that's what they cut him down for, because they he was showing people that we're African, you know what I mean? And, and not even just African, we have certain different areas, like Malcolm's from the Bambara tribe, and that's how I know my people, because of him finding our history and they say the West Indies, British Indies, whatever Indies, but I'll just call them like the Caribbean yeah. islands or but so he found out uh his heritage through uh like his his travels. Yes. Uh yeah uh, and just man, I believe just like him doing the travels in Ghana and, and going back and finding more about his history, his African roots led him to find out that, that we are from the Bambara tribe because he went back to Ajar. A-J-A-R. This is like my great, 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 great grandfather. Great. So this is my lineage, you know what I'm saying, man? You know, I got Malcolm in me, man. I got um, I got Luis Little in me, running through me, you know? Um and, and I, I think, got Adjar, uh, Adjar running through me, man. Like a couple of weeks ago, they found, even, you know, they found some more Egyptian uh, statues of, of the queen, and okay. et cetera. Yes, yeah, it's, it's like, yeah. Which all one, Hapshet Sut or yeah. like? Let me look it up. It's so many. And you see like Hapshet Sut, that's, a, that's during like the, uh, man, this book talk about it all. But that's that's how I know a lot of it now. But uh, she was during like the, the Hyksos 
uh, invasion, they call that. So, so during the time where Asians were invading Egypt and naming it after them and making the statues look like them. And, but at the same time, they had to uh, integrate and had to have sex with these Africans. Yep. You know what I mean? How can we be created? You know what I mean? I was in Dallas and they was like, it was some militant black Israelites. Mm-hmm. And they, they was like, you an Edomite, you an Edomite all in my face. You an Edomite, cut. I'm like, <laughs> man, calm down. I'm just walking past. I had to get yeah. into it like, hold up, hold up. So Bob Marley, Edomite, yeah, Bob Marley, Edomite too. I'm like, okay, all right, fine. He an Edomite, sure. But we don't know nothing about that. We just know that we African, we Negroes. You know what I mean? You trying to say that we yeah. Edomites now? We from far off, the other side of Asia? You know what I mean? Or it's just wrong, man. It's just yeah, wrong. It's too to much division. Is like yeah, it's too much division. Yeah, and it's even program. I'm writing a book right now. It okay. is. I'm writing a book. Yeah, I call it a uh, lies, bloody conquest, and uh, it's it's in, it's big. It's big, but it's just it's just talk about the lies and bloody conquests of of all these European invaders and and other invaders, and how. They switched the game up by lying and saying that Jesus was white. They switched the game up in lying by saying that they created uh, universities first when the Salamanca University was here before they asked. Oh, yeah. So from the Book of the Dead. Um, yeah, that was the a, Book of Ani. Yeah, the Book of the Dead, it. man. And so, yeah, it was a recent founding, uh, 22 burial. Um, so it was, a, it was announced, I think, January, top of the year. So, wow. yeah, man. Wow. Like, yeah, you know, it's always found. It's coming up on the daily. We already know that. <laughs> yeah, we know that. We was, fact, the thing is, we, we world people, man. We, we was everywhere. And yeah. If they, if, and then I overheard this live last night. If they truly wanted to give us reparations, just give us the world back. <laughs> just like, get out. Just, I'm going to send y'all to Iceland. <laughs> man, <laughs> so, <laughs> speaking of which, how you feel about that Bill Gates situation, him shunning the sun and, you know what I mean? The, 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 so elaborate with Bill Gates, man. I, I, nasty Bill. I call, I call Nasty Joe, nasty, all of them nasty. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, man. boy, Nasty Bill. So, like, I think Iceland is about to be, like, like some new spot for them and then they trying to like hide the sun so it's like where we gonna go iceland Mm. come on now y'all from iceland like we actually we found iceland for y'all you know i mean (laughs) you want to talk about it yeah or or antarctica yeah because 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 the first person to find antarctica was a black man not captain perry oh no but but your boy henson yeah. Who is related to to Taraji P. Henson? That was crazy. That was cra- that's crazy. That's circle, man. We, yeah, that's full circle. No, uh, even so, bring it back to Sam Cook. Um, yeah, bring it back. Gra- bring it back. On my grandmother's side, um, she was a uh, through marriage. She was related to David Ruffin. But, yeah. Wow. It's crazy. I, I, I feel you. My uh, my my girlfriend of five years, almost six years. Um, she's related by marriage to Dizzy Gillespie. <laughs> crazy man it's funny man uh i wear bob now and i've been repping bob for a long time man i love his soul love his spirit but oh, yeah. uh my sister is uh is now um uh partners with 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 a, a brother rasta brother who is a just a brethren of bob like man. his dad did all the uh discography work for bob his name is uh is uh, I don't want to yeah. get it wrong, but um, he's a Marley basically to the T. But uh, Nessa's dad is Neville, Neville Garrett, and he did all about most of Bob's artwork, bro, drawings, mm-hmm. and he wrote his songs for him. Bob Marley didn't write his music down. Oh no, nah, he did. You Neville wrote tell. it down. You can tell. He, he 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 had some. He had he had Neville write for him. He would sing it. It would be his words out of his mind, Bob's mind. But he Same. would have Neville write it down you see um and and so like all, all that goes to show like how like he was just from god's culture like just from like like he was a part of god you know i think you know um yeah. and that's why people look at him they look at Haley selassie i the first as like a uh 
G God, you know. But it goes back before him, bro. Menelik. Menelik the first. You ever heard of him? Say it again. Menelik the first. Mm. Menelik the first. Well, I haven't. Menelik was a uh, 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 he was an emperor of Ethiopia. His dad is King Solomon. Mm. King Solomon. Man. And, and his mom is Queen of Sheba. Her name is Makita. Makita. Yeah. So this is an African. And I get I think I think Solomon was African too. They make him look white. Mm-hmm. But I think he was African, man. Oh yeah. You know yeah, what I mean? Man. So um Menelik wouldn't have been light, he wouldn't he would have been light skinned if Solomon was white. You see? <laughs> but he ain't. You can look up yeah. Menelik the first and you see he was dark. But um yeah, Amenelik was the one who brought Christianity to Ethiopia. Before that, they believed in the pagan gods. They believed in what the Queen of Sheba, Makita, what she was, was being taught by these high culture civilizations, by these Africans of the mysterious systems, mystery systems. You know, you heard of that no, from yeah. the book of Ani, the papyrus of Ani. Mm. The, the mysterious systems and these mysterious mystery systems, they all have to do with uh, uh, geography, uh, uh, the solar, uh, everything, bro. Engineering, all these yeah. different things, mathematics, science, they created them first. And now you look at it, the Knights of Columbus and then the, all these different Masonic uh, companies and all these different Masonic belief systems, they all came from that. Oh, yeah. From the, within, Moors and everything. Within yeah. these pyramids. Yeah, and the Moors were all black. They the ones that started the Salamanca University, Saqqara. Oh, exactly. You know what I mean? So, so they and now we can't get in there. Now they won't let any black people into the the, the Knights of Templar, or, or they won't even let nobody in the Elks Lodge. Exactly. That's yeah. black of my color, your color, because they know that we were the ones that created it first. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, that's going over off topic. But I de- I did want oh, to no, lament that because it's like. That's important because how you hide that history and then you try to say that America was built by all these white Freemasons. Yeah. Uh, the Freemasons got their whole idealistic ideology from these Africans. I seen pictures you know of George I mean? Washington with a moor with the, you know, the, the red famous. Yep, in the skirt. <laughs> yeah, the skirt. That. Yeah. yeah man. George Washington grandfather was black, man. And like, so. You no know, Abe, you know what I'm saying? Start on Abe, yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah man. Nah, nah, we, you know, uh, uh, it's like it's like uh, uh, Kodak said. He said the president that, that I like is is um dead and on a piece of paper. That's <laughs> <laughs> nah, not like yeah. that. That's a bit militant. But he just was saying like the money is one. Exactly. He said Trump freed me, but the only president I like is the one on a, a green. That's green. It's so crazy that. When I, when I found out Obama's related to George Bush and then that, that, I didn't know that, that. yeah, man, his, uh, so his grandfather, man, his grandfather was a CIA agent. Um, I, I didn't know that. Yeah. Let me look. Wow. Yeah, man. And you know, uh, President Obama, he goes back to Kenya, of course, and the Kenya people, they were some of the originators of Africa. You know what I mean? We know it as Kenya, but it, back in the day, it wasn't named Kenya. You know what I mean? It had different names, all these oh, different yeah. things. They changed so uh, many names. It's crazy. Yeah, they did. I mean, they changed our they, names. You know, they changed it from red. To, you know, they yeah. always tried to. Right, yeah, my but, last name, Jones. Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> His name was uh, Stanley Dunham, Obama's grandfather, okay. the CIA agent. He was related to uh, all the Bushes, you know, you know, Bush Sr., uh, even um, yeah, like the lineage go all the way down to uh, James Ma- James Madison. Like it's it's a crazy lineage, lineage, man. It's it's, it's crazy. But when I found yeah, out I this, like, hear- oh, Obama was meant to be president. I- <laughs> I, I, yeah, I did hear that uh, all the presidents are somehow related. Yeah, it's like Trump. one family. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it probably just switched up now since Donald yeah, Trump and now uh, Joe Biden. Joe Biden being the Irish Catholic. Where, where are they from? Ireland, right? Mm-hmm. So now the person that run that's from Ireland is running America. Come on now, come on. Yeah, and, and and Catholicism at the top. When the Catholicism, the Roman Catholics, they got it all from where? Yeah. 
I guess I just go back to this because this book goes back to it, man. And they talk about like how people like Menelik, they brought these things or people like, uh, like, like, yeah. The people that brought uh, religion to Americas, like they said, Christopher Columbus, you know, come on now, bro was in the prison cells. You know about that, right? Yeah, exactly, yeah. <laughs> yeah, he was locked up in in, yeah. in in prison when they found, when they saying that he found some shit. But anyway. Um, <laughs> yeah, he ain't fun. Yeah. yeah, but they, they, they enforced these religions that was already something that was created before and then just hidden. Hidden and suppressed, like Makita, uh, Menelik's mom. She has maps of America. Maps. Makita got maps of America, and they suppressed it. Um, but it just goes, it goes full circle because it shows, like, look at like Sam Cooke, like, like he could have been like a legends legend, you yeah, know, was, just from it. that. He only really had one song that was a a, a mind opening song. Yeah, that's that they're saying Malcolm was attributed to that. You know what I mean? He kind of pushed him, coerced him, or or forced him to to use his black side. Yeah, use that <laughs> hey, brother. Voice, use man. you use your voice, man. Yeah. But uh, I think it was powerful though to go back to that part. That movie. Uh, yeah, that performance scene because... was dope. That performance scene. Like, hey, why the mics are cut off? That was messed yeah. up. Yo, yo, you gonna cut my mic off, man? It's like, All right, let's freestyle. <laughs> man, for real. <laughs> that was that was powerful. And, and, and and how Uncle Malcolm was just like telling him like, but you have, bro, you have to because this, this is we at war, you know. And and when he when they was going through it, I I cut it off, bro. I cut the whole movie off and went to sleep. Actually, the phone died, <laughs> so it was like, oh, yo, it's a wrap. But uh, I woke up the next morning and watched it, and uh, I, t- I had a whole different up- understanding, a whole different upbringing about it and so, and now I overstand because now I see that Malcolm was very uh, 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 penetrable he was he, he wasn't impenetrable at that moment because he he was seeing his life flash before his eyes as he had always been seeing like he said I live like a dead like a man just died already because he had he had he had escaped death. You gotta see, kind huh? He had escaped death many a times. You read the autobiography, right? Oh yeah, man. And salute the Red Fox, man. <laughs> he got stories with Red, Red Fox. He got stories with Red Fox, man. Yeah, man. He they was, was uh, his they cellmates. was cooking together, man. Cellmates, man. Yeah. They were cellmates, dog. Yeah. What kind of bro? Detroit Red and Chicago Red. How Chicago they become Red. cellmates, dog? Cellmates. You know what I mean? Yeah. And then so, uh. Soulmates, yeah. really, bro, because <laughs> they was together to the to the end. But uh, with with Uncle Malcolm saying that to to Sam Cook, like you gotta you gotta you gotta go deep and 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 find your inner self and say to yourself, "I'm not giving myself enough uh, uh, confidence. I need to be more confident, even if they try to kill me. I need to be confident that this message is going." Send into the the depths of our uh, just bl- our African souls, you know, or just just reaching down because really what it was is rhythm, and I'll explain that in a second. But oh, yeah, uh, right. yeah. but uh, he was reaching down and saying like, "This is where I've been." Even though all the music before that, it was we were just going dancing. And, yeah. and I just gospel wanted everybody records, to, yeah, gospel, yeah. he was pivotal, dog. The way he broke it down to Malcolm, like, look, I've been making money for these black people, you know what I mean? And then Malcolm's like, but did you? I got one for you. Yeah, <laughs> he broke down bag. the number one. Yeah, yeah, it's like, hey, I got something for you. Let me put it on the record, man. <laughs> That's where I was questioning, like, he walking around with a Bob Dylan record in his satchel, in his, <laughs> come on, bro. Yeah, he I carried think his they, briefcase with you. Yeah, yeah man. Yeah. But well, it's cool because, uh, can't remember his name right now. Um, Kevin Ross. I, I can't remember the guy who wrote the the screenplay. But Brian, nah, no, nah, I don't want to get his name wrong. But uh, shout out to him because who wrote the script it, for the it, movie? It, who wrote yeah, the screenplay? Yeah, right. yeah. Shout out to him and Regina King for picking it up yeah. and, and reading it and then saying we can do something with this because yeah. it made Uncle Malcolm live more. It was sad to see, but I talked to my auntie Sean about it, and she's like, "Yo, brother, it was good. It was good. They call me brother, 
brother, it was really good. Like, why? Like, what were you? Uh, what were you keep, pissed off about? Yeah, keep Keith. Powers. Yeah, Keith Powers. Brooklyn man, salute to Brooklyn man. That's where Keith, you born. Keith Powers. Yeah, keep. Yeah, Keith Powers. So Keith, uh, K E M P Powers. Yeah, Kemp. 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 Kemp Powers. <laughs> yeah, I was about man. to say Keith, bro. Is that the dude that played in the new edition movie? <laughs> no. <laughs> But uh, Kemp Powers, yeah, Kemp, Kemp shout Powers. out to him, man. That's crazy. I was going to say Brian Kemp, but no, 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 no. That's what yeah. uh, Kemp Powers, man, shout out to you, bro. Because um, he made Uncle Malcolm live again. He made Jim Brown, who is still doing his thing, I think. Right? Is Jim Brown still out? Yeah, yeah, he's out here, you know. Uh, out here. <laughs> he was with Kanye right. in the office that one time with, uh, with Donald. We can't. But, Let's all bring it up. Let's all bring, yeah. it. Let's <laughs> bring it up. He was trying to get us some reparations, I think. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, but, man. Um, December eleventh, man. Uh, nineteen sixty four. You know, Sam Cooke. You know his uh, his passing. But the film was based on February twenty fifth, nineteen sixty four. So, uh, whoa, 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 I'm fact checking. I'm fact check. I got a fact check. So yeah. So the eight dates is wrong. Yeah, it's crazy. That's why yeah. I don't like that. That's I said on I the night like about that. Yeah, the night of uh, yeah, February twenty fifth, nineteen sixty four. Yeah, that's okay. that's when the one night in Miami was. That's powerful, man. Yeah. That's powerful, and to think that both of them passed on that next that within that year, that next year. Yeah. Wait, so Sam passed before Malcolm? I mean, look, yeah, I don't. Yeah, yeah, he did. Was, you yeah. know, it's it's wild too because look at how Spike Lee used that that song. Well, right when Uncle Malcolm was um, making his transcend into the nether world they call it in egypt in egyptian time um the nether world um the next world but mm -hmm. when he when he was walking and they did that iconic uh spike lee shot where he's not moving and, and oh yeah and the, the floating underneath he was floating, floating. <laughs> yeah it, it plays um sam cook i was born by a river yeah yeah if I'm and, doing the uh, math right, yeah, yeah, like December to February, that's that's the that's the gap, you know. That's that's sad, man. You know, December 11th, is. February 21st, like, man, yeah. it is, yeah, it's a lot of like hidden gems, hidden secrets we could chop up, and and I can't pass everything on at once. Uh, oh, yeah, like Uncle Malcolm would say, Uncle Malcolm would say, you got to give it to him in bits, bits by bits, and pieces. yeah, 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 man, um, but. The rhythm, uh, I was going to get into that real quick. The rhythm is that uh, the Europeans, they they play music, right? Mm -hmm. They just play music. But we created the instrument. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? From Africa. You can go back to Africa and see where the first instruments were created in the yeah. Nile Valley. I got, I got Coltrane playing back here. Yeah, man. So you got Coltrane. You already know, John. <laughs> yeah. But uh, I, we feel the music. It's the difference. They hear it, we feel it, yeah. you see? And, and uh, this guy had wrote about that in a book uh, that I got, and I just be picking it up every now and then because it's like, talk about voodoo. But voodoo, bro, voodoo go back before Christianity. So oh, yeah, it was a religion in, um, in Haiti. Like, yo, it's like yeah. been a religion yeah. origin. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, and they even switched it up. That book talks about it a lot, how they switched up the... the the belief system uh, in Haiti and they've made it a little more just to, to it makes it more like about the, the country of Haiti instead of about the religion of voodooism uh, or, or they got, they got a bunch of different other words for it, but uh, yeah. voodoo or um, originally it was more like, it was more to do with like magic, basically yeah. magic. And that's what the mystery system talk about magic or or the uh I got this book, it's called the uh, the book uh, Aquarian Gospel of Jesus Christ. Okay. And he's black on there. My dad gave me that book, and he wrote in there, like read this basically, like like you it's gonna help you along your journey, you know. And now that I'm reading it, I'm like, whoa! He go into one pyramid. And they try to uh, um, manipulate Jesus, you know, like bringing a girl out and saying, you know, the girl's like, you know, you can have your way with me. And he's like, nah, you are love. You, you're God. Like, I'm good. 
you know, and then she's like, all right, you, you can go to the next one. And then they would bring out food and he'd be like, no, nah, I'm not hungry. Mm-hmm. You know? And then they'd be like, all right, you passed the test. And then they'll bring out like, you know, he'd go in the next temple, the next pyramid. Bro, this all pyramids. He did this for a month or two in Africa. You see what I'm saying? They give the place, they give the time, and they're trying to say he never was in Africa. <laughs> but, man. Come on now. What's wrong, man? <laughs> yeah. See, I'm, you. Ended. I'm, I'm not going sit, to sit at your table and watch you eat with nothing on my plate and call myself a diner. Being here in America doesn't make you an American. Yeah, you know I mean, we got to be, got to be, we got to have some food on our plate. <laughs> yeah, man. Exactly. Appreciate Try you. Try me. <laughs> Brother, man. let's get it, man. All right. All right, man. From the little family to you, man. Much love. Hey, little to the Kirksey, man. Conscious crazy, man. Appreciate it. Yes, man. Conscious crazy, brother. All right.